Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 28 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4pm in Europe, 3pm in the UK and 9am in Central US. If you missed the podcast you can catch up with the whole show because I re-upload it every Sunday on my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis. Or you can check out the audio only version which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes and on SoundCloud. If you've got any questions, comments or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. However, please be aware that this episode is pre-recorded and we're not actually live right now. Although it might seem like we're live, <laughs> we're not actually <laughs> live. What? Is this the future? How, is this the I'm, past? How do we do this? How do we do this? <laughs> young! I know. <laughs> but you, by you're using... watching the past now. <laughs> we are in the future. Whoa. <laughs> by using the magic of the internet, mind blown, we are pre recording this show and live streaming it back to you on Saturday. So, hello to wow. past Mike, who will be watching this maybe in the future. <laughs> you, you got hello. any advice for, for past Mike? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any advice? <laughs> Hey, I'm, uh, yeah, Good don't question. eat yellow snow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> uh, it is going to snow here in the UK, apparently. So oh. uh, that's my uh, well, that's advice. Good to know. Yeah. So uh, let me introduce you to the crew. First up, this guy is packing 49 inches <laughs> of a curved monitor, of course. It is our main man, Nathy. How you doing, dude? You all right? I'm doing fine. I'm getting uh, a tanned right now of this screen, you know? It's... Uh... Yeah, it's like I'm I'm on a holiday now. You know, I can just sit here and just close my eyes. You know, put get the rays. glasses off and whew, it's, get that, uh, screen, that screen glare. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, back in the days, those old monitors, you could always like get a tan from those. But uh, nowadays, it's it's all so futuristic. You know, and uh, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe so this it, is already old in the future when this podcast gets watched. You know, maybe there's already <laughs> yeah. a new screen then. Who knows? Yeah, that's true. It's already already <laughs> obsolete. But if you haven't seen Nathie's super dope setup, you should go and check it out on his Twitter yeah. where he's posted a picture of it. He's got this sick 49-inch curved monitor above yeah. three monitors <laughs> anyway. So as if the guy needed any more monitors in the first place, he's I now do. got this sick one. It's almost it, like so. I'm in VR now, you know? Like the more screens <laughs> Always. I build around me, it's like, it's oh, like I'm, uh, I'm in VR. It's like that episode from uh, How I Met Your Mother where like uh, Barney like puts on the TV and it's like the entire wall. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I know what brilliant. I would do with that setup. I would get home and I would just put flying toasters up over all the monitors. <laughs> just leave it that way for a night just to bake them in. That's a good one. Nice. This okay, shows nice. my age a little bit. Some of you won't know that reference. No. It's a screensaver, no. Mike. Classic. You should look it up. I will. I will. The second this podcast ends. <laughs> <laughs> so, next up, he is the drummer of the band. It is, of course, the rowdy guy. How you doing, dude? <laughs> <Ba -doom. laughs> yeah, I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing pretty, pretty great. It's the first time that we're streaming so late. Actually, it's a, it's it a is. nice change. Yeah. It yeah. is late. Sort of, I was draining, sort of waning in energy a little bit, and then I started chatting to you guys, and then I was like pumped again, super hyped. That's just uh, that's what we do. That's how you, we roll. You guys just lift me up. We're like a boy <laughs> band, Mike. We're like a boy band in it together. Well, if Rowdy's the drummer, uh, maybe I would be the lead singer, as I'm the host. What would uh, what would you guys be, uh, Zim and Nathy? Bass. You... I think yeah, Nathy would I be. Yeah, I wanted uh... to say like Zim is a bass guy. Nathy would be <laughs> like a background dancer. I know. I like... would dance, and I would also jump into the crowd, and I would also buy pizza for our audience, of course, yeah. because they need to Na wait Nathy in line plays for the tambourine. us to perform. Nice, nice. I heard that he was gonna bite people, but maybe that was just what I heard. I, ca I can also be your manager, so I just sit in, in the back and I'm like just counting all the money while you guys just dance for me. You yeah, know, nice. I can do that too. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so options, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, you guys, our viewers and our listeners, could be our groupies. So it all kind of works out in the end. Yes. Sit on in here. Uh, Next up, he's always lighting fires and burning tires in VR, of course. It is our ZimTok5. How you doing, mate? You all right? Always racing around, always. Uh, but actually, um, yeah, I'm, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a shite week, to be honest. It's been a bit of a shite. <laughs> and a very short one, given this is a, you know, when you come asking us our games, it'd be like, be able to count them on one hand for once. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, that's yeah. true. That's it's true. been a very short week, this one. Yeah, it has. <laughs> oh, it has. Mm. 
Uh, so, in today's episode, we are going to be talking about GDC predictions, what our thoughts are on this upcoming awesome event. Uh, we've got Jurassic World Alive AR. You can go and hunt down a T-Rex in your own town. Mm. Awesome. A Japanese headset with a candy arm that gets that feeds you candy from your virtual girlfriend. Super weird, but also hilarious. <laughs> uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon Joyride is being announced by Atari. And we've got mm. Bose talking about some AR sunglasses uh, that they're working on as well, which is really, really interesting. Um, wow. But let's uh, start this show off with what you've been up to in this very short week. Like I say, it's, <laughs> well, uh, well, it's going to well, be a very Mike. short one. Mike, before we dive deeper into the rabbit hole, you didn't introduce yourself, and it's it's very important, you know. I I, I think oh, it's uh, Jesus. That is true. That Who is, is this true. guy? Who's this? Who's and this Joker? Who's this, who's this, who this, who this Joker? Well, I am Mike, the, the one pillow. with the beard from Virtual Reality Oasis. You can buy my pillow from all good retailers. If they don't sell it, then they're not good retailers. That's uh, my answer in that one. Um, so now you know who I am, and you know who the yeah. crew are. Let's find nice. out what the crew have been up to this week, in this short little week. So, yeah. Zim, like, you, you, you got me intrigued now. You said you haven't been up to much, so I'm going to start with you first. Oh, um, so tell me, what have you been up to um, in the few days that we haven't spoken since? <laughs> yeah, well, you started, off, you started off with a racing thing, so I'll, I'll touch on that. I, I, for the first time, yeah. um, the guy behind Procedural Rally League, which is an Assetto Corsa mod, which is a procedurally generated track, he did a hill climb, which is just like a wider track. It's not in the forest. Of, well, it is in the forest, actually, but super fast and uphill. So I did that first and kind of posted my times, and then a friend of mine beat me. So I've got to go back and try to rerun that. Uh, you only get you only get two goes, and then it's locked in, and then you know your embarrassment is up there on the leaderboard. Um, so so that's that's shame. that's the second plan for the second half of my week, uh, which is now in the future, which is incredibly confusing. I'm referring to people on the Saturday mm. to the past, um, and then the second thing I played, which is a game that has been sitting on my wish list for about a year. Uh, one of my viewers got me was Phantasma which is like, I thought it was going to be a horror game. Um, it sounds like it. it. It does, and it's got like this creepy little bunny, and when you start off, one of the first things the lady tells you to do is stab yourself in the chest. Oh, so wow. this game is, yeah. is, it is a psychological Fun. thriller yeah. slash puzzler with some fecking difficult puzzles. I nearly walked away three different times. <laughs> if I didn't have help from the audience, uh, who didn't know the game either, um, it, we would not have been able to do it. I won't spoil it, but it's, tough as nails um we got through i think three of the puzzle levels in the course of like two and a half hours um and then it was just well, it was time for bed so um that's that's what i've been up to but uh yeah please don't ask me yeah. to stab myself in the chest mike because i keep having that repeating in my head yeah that sounds super weird is it a fairly old title then i think it's about a year and a half old so it okay. kind of looks like something it's it's not bad looking uh it kind of looks a bit like if you were to take um it's not Grey's Anatomy, Zim. What's that game called? The black and white one on Rift. Oh, Wilson's Heart. Wilson's, Wilson's Heart. Heart. It's a bit like Wilson's Heart, colored, with right. a this this kind of pink bunny in there that obviously <laughs> is the seed of all evil or something. But you're basically a clinical patient sitting in a room. You have to take pills, and then everything starts to fall apart. And it's really oh, weird. That, that does sound a bit like Wilson's Heart. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was actually it wasn't. I mean, it was not bad. Um, but I still have to give it an avoid because it, it doesn't. It's, 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 it's almost too hard. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think a lot of individual players would just give up on it, to be honest. Um, and it doesn't again? really keep the pace. It's called Phantasma. Phantasma. Cool. cool. It's funny though. Fantastic. Like the developer of this game sent me an email when it launched, yep. and they did like creepy images of bunnies, like cute ones with caps oh, lock, yeah, like yeah, yeah, "cute yeah. bunny, cute bunny, cute bunny, a bunny wants yeah. to play with you." And uh, I was like, <laughs> well, "What the heck is this?" And then I, I, I and then spammed. I responded like, "Hey, I want to have a key." And they were like, "Yeah, cute bunny, come, come, come." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> man. Hey, let's go." <laughs> well, this and tells us one thing, it, right? Because I got too scared. This tells us one thing that uh, that that that. that Behind weird games, often there are weird devs. And we know that from a few <laughs> yeah, examples in this industry, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's a good thing, you know? Um, yeah. If you, some people that are creative are also a little crazy, but that's, that's fun. I like that. I like those kind of people. It's like the Alice in like Wonderland group. thing. Just get, just get high on loads of drugs and go create a VR game. We'll love yeah. it. Oh, you can be crazy without drugs too, right? Yeah. I mean, don't, do drugs. <laughs> don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only when it's in Job Simulator, when you can just eat it uh, and nothing happens, you know? Are there drugs in Job Simulator? Because it's safe. Of course. They're pills. They're pills. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or you just drink wine all the time or do all kinds. Like you can, you can <laughs> drug yourself drug. with everything. Yeah, but that's in VR uh, for the people that are confused yeah. now. We're talking about drugs in, in, in the VR oasis. You know, where you can just <laughs> not in as me. much as you want there. <laughs> not in me. Yeah, no, there's been enough things put drugs in, the in me. No, <laughs> the, the, the metaphors, uh, 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 you know, the Matrix, yeah, the VR yeah. oasis. Just, and just to be clear, the VR Inside <laughs> podcast does not condone drug use. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. Okay. So, Whoops, rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have you been up to in this very short little week, dude? What have you Who are you talking to? Uh, Rowdy, Rowdy you dude. or uh, okay, me? Yeah, I, I did uh, <laughs> like you already mentioned. I did uh, the VR drumming. Uh, I did uh, into the rhythm, which was quite uh, kind of hilarious. Uh, I did that still on uh, on Saturday, I think. What was the feedback uh, on that, Rowdy? I'm really curious. Um, I had the feeling in the beginning that the notes when I was hitting it wasn't exactly on, but huh. um, in the settings in the game you can adjust it into such a way that it works better for you but i didn't have the patience of course to yeah. uh, to set it up perfectly so i just like if, if you do it like for like a little while then your brain kind of adjusts to it and you know when to when to hit it so i, I just did that Me syndrome yeah, yeah 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 that's that's basically yeah. it i i don't I, I don't have patience to be setting up stuff like that i just want to play it and if it doesn't work i'll find another way to make it work for me <laughs> uh, but uh, the the music in it was kind of fun. It's very energetic, very kind of. Uh, I think they're all like copyright free tracks, so it's it's kind of fun to cover them as well. That's um, useful. Yeah. I did have the feeling that not always all the notes were with the beats perfectly aligned, like yeah. which is kind of weird for a rhythm game. Uh, some people noticed that in the video as well that I made, saying that like it seems like not all of the notes like they're actually on the on the track. They're just like random a little bit, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, I think there are better games out there, but it's cool to be doing it with the drumsticks. Uh, I kind of like that stuff, yeah. I, I haven't really played many of those types of games. I know that you have, Sim, and you've played uh, uh, Beats, Beats Fever, right? Beats Fever, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beats and Fever you love that one. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, I've seen a lot of like uh, Beats Saber appearing as well, which Mike played. Yeah, of uh, course. Which is, uh, looks really awesome. I think those are still better oh. titles in the genre. And, and, and what about nice Airtone? <laughs> yeah, but there's, there's a ton of them. <laughs> There's a ton of them. Yeah. But yeah, another talk- one I played. Um, excuse me. No, I was just gonna say, like, um, d- did you ever play like a uh, rock band or anything like that, or any of those no. other drumming games? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Never did it. I know you have another one that's called a uh, Paradiddle. I think mm-hmm. uh, that's also one, but that's more like a realistic drum simulator. Mm. Um, I, there's a guy, I think the developer has been making YouTube videos on that himself, which mm-hmm. looks kind of interesting. But with a drum, you know, I, I, I drum myself from time to time, and you need physical feedback for, yep. from a drum. Oh, yeah. And uh, with, yeah. with VR, that's really not going to... I mean, it's impressive to see what they can already do, but without the physical feedback, I think it's a very hard thing to uh, to do. It would yeah. be cool to have it synced up to like an electronic drum or something, you know? Like something yeah. you could put in your living room, you could put the headset on, and you're like drumming in real life, uh, yeah. or drumming in, 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 yeah. in the virtual world in front of an audience or something. Yeah. That would be freaking sweet. See, Ooh. Rock Band had uh, big kits like that when uh, the big Rock Band yeah, yeah. originally came out. So when, um, I think it was Rock Band came out for Oculus Rift, right? But it was just the guitar part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, a shame yeah. that they didn't introduce the drums as well, because like you say, that would have, been a really cool fit and like mm. sitting there and seeing the crowd go crazy if you're like doing it it's good, so much more hardware would have been really cool for it. of course that's of the course, problem yeah. huh? that's the problem yeah you need so much hardware for an electronic drum even like a cheap electronic drum is already like a serious uh and to buy that for like one game i mean there are people yeah. that would do it definitely i would do it mm. <laughs> definitely mm. it's freaking fun i gotta say but, one uh, thing ready uh if you haven't if you haven't touched it before there's a really weird game on steam that fits into this genre kind of which is called Stage Presence, which is basically oh, yeah, I know that get one. on stage and karaoke yeah, yeah. with no I think track. me and Natey tried that one. Yeah, we tried, we tried that it together, one. but yeah. uh, it was very early and uh, it's it didn't work for us, I think. Did oh. it work? No, no, it didn't. I don't think so. You can do like a multiplayer stand on stage and do crazy stuff to yeah. get the attention of the audience yeah. and then the bar was yeah. raising and you got more points. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did that. Uh, <laughs> and another game I played was uh, Throw Anything which is kind of like uh, just a small little indie game where you need to throw things at creatures that climb up your wall. Uh, I did that one. Uh, it did quite well on the channel, though, so that was fun. And then uh, another one I c- uh, played was uh, Mad Farm. I didn't know what it was about when I, when I started it, but it, apparently it's about uh, uh, zombie uh, 
animals, like <laughs> all, all, all the creatures in the in the in the farm, they have turned into zombies. It's like then, pet and, cemetery and, in VR. Yeah, and they, they they come at you and they jump at you. But the, the the stupid thing about it is, is that the audio in the game it can freak you out because you hear like. In like the background somewhere, you're like, where the heck is that chicken? Where's the chicken? And all of a sudden, like jumps at you. Like it's uh-huh. very cartoony. It's very very uh, uh, silly made and stuff. Like an, uh, there's a lot of blood splatters everywhere. Um, but it, it freaked me out at a certain point, especially in the beginning, because I didn't know it was going to be about zombie uh, chickens. I didn't really read the description of it. I just put it on. Uh, that that's another one I played, and uh, that's about it. What I did this week. Sounds like you've been smashing it, mate. <laughs> I yeah, don't know yeah, where you've I, had all this time. Yeah, how how <laughs> no, many days I, I was always... that, Mike? Jesus, that was three days. Yeah, yeah but I always I, I don't have time to do any recordings in the weekend, so I always do all of my recordings before I go to work in the morning. So I get up wow. at like six six thirty a.m. and wow. then I record for like two hours, and then I edit in the evenings. That's how I wow. try to push out my videos every day. Rise and grind. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Workout schedule nice work. for content creation. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> nice work, man. Nice work. But talking about uh, beat games, uh, you mentioned Beat Saber, actually. It's the one with the lightsabers, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually really looking forward to that game. Like, there's been some really interesting videos that have come out of it, like mixed reality videos. Um, and the yeah, way that the f- they film it in mixed reality just makes it look so cool. I think they're also doing like some kind of like big advertising campaign because every time I open up my Facebook, mm. I see like a clip from, uh, yeah, from Beat do. Saber. It's like, like all it's, over it's the appearing place, everywhere yeah. on every website uh-huh. and Facebook page. And yeah, it did kind of go viral. It looks cool. It looks yeah. so cool. Like also with like the because uh, it's a girl who's playing it. She like yeah. really like plays it out very like with mm. big gestures. I don't think you need to use that big gestures, mm. but the way that she does it, it's really, it's really yeah. cool. Really yeah. cool, I should I, I, I think like, like talking about like the advertisement, I think it's not Beat Saber itself that is doing it. It's like that mixed reality program right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, of that course, is. of course. Um, but yeah. it, it's funny though, that they are uh, advertising mixed reality right now, because I, I don't feel like it's that, well, it, it's like a, a fun bonus thing to do from time to time, but Maybe it's because the game is so epic that it now is like yeah. suddenly. And the music, I think they, they really hit it with the music. Like, I mean, even in yeah. that clip that they're using, like the, the music, it sounds pretty pretty decent. Like, I have a fun for this kind of about game. It, though. I have a sinking feeling that's going to be a little bit like Mirror's Edge. You know, and like <laughs> everyone else playing it looks <laughs> awesome and you're playing it and you're like <laughs> flubbing every note. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I like these kinds of games, but it. Yeah. 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 I love that, the mirrored edge effect. (laughs) Yeah, but but talking about like, uh, because I was going to talk about it anyway, but that's that's what I've been messing around with this week so far is that Live uh, application. It's called LIV. And basically it's an application that you can download for free on Steam that can help you record mixed reality content because I've got the green screen for it, but um, I've never actually set up uh, a mixed reality recording before and I know tons of other people have done it like uh, Tribal Instincts and Sweet Viva they've got some really cool mixed reality videos yeah. up on their channel but I've always kind of wanted to give it a go myself but I've never had the time to set it up because it is pretty time consuming so I'm actually planning yeah. to go through all the settings and maybe do a, a step-by-step video on how to record in mixed reality and kind of make it easier for people that want to achieve yeah, that that'd look. be nice I've, I'll yeah. watch that I'm, I'm really yeah. curious how easy it is now because I, I did try it myself a few years ago as well and it was so hard, and there were so many options I had to care about. And now yeah. it's like they I know that, I know, I know that, that Tribal so. did like uh, he made like a little program back then yeah, to make it yeah. a little bit easier uh, for people. It's, who want it to seems do like that. it got easier now to do it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. funnily enough, uh, Tribal's tool is actually in Liv's program. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought so. Yeah, because yeah. it was hugely popular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's a, a separate way to do it on the Rift. Uh, you run a program which is in the utilities and that kind of, you have to scan a little checkerboard and that kind of yeah. works out your distances from your camera. Mm. Um, but I haven't actually tried it properly yet. I, I still need more time, but hopefully, like I say, I'll have a video covering that soon. Uh, but other than that, I've just been working on a review for a game that's currently under embargo um, and hopefully I can release more details about that next week. But um, that's been about it so far. Um, yes. So what about you, Nathy? Uh, what have you been up to, dude? So I also played Into the Rhythm. Um, it was a sponsored video, by the way. I'm, I'm not gonna lie because we uh, we I like almost everyone played it. Um, but um, I I did like it. It's an interesting music experience. The only thing I would warn everyone about, if you are interested in buying this, as Rowdy said before, there are many others out there that are way better. But the thing is, like, it has a workshop, and you can create your own yeah. uh, tracks, and you can also create your own worlds. And I, I haven't really seen that with other yeah. 
uh, uh, rhythm-based uh, games out there. But the thing is, I tried the workshop and it doesn't work. <laughs> so right. I was like, why are there no songs on there? Why is there like nothing on there? And right. um, so it's not working. And it, and it seems like the game is outdated. So in my review I made, I said like, I would just wait until the developers are showing that they are still alive and that they are willing to, well, update the game because it's a shame. Make the workshop available for everyone so they can create. Like, it could have made the game a lot better. I mean, we, mm. we got many examples of other VR games that have a workshop now mm. and are, are just killing it, you know, in terms yeah. of uh, how popular it they increases are. the so, longevity of the game. Huh? I mean, yeah. if you if you can yeah. do that kind of stuff, then uh, your game has so much more potential. Yeah. So it's so world, for me, course. it's like I I liked it, but it's it's just it has been updated. The last update was in uh, uh, November two thousand and seventeen, oh. and then nothing okay. happened anymore. So wow. that's that's what I would recommend everyone. So mm. if you want to get it, just wait until the developer updates it. So that's uh, that's one I played, uh, and I also played uh, um, Steam VR Home. Now that sounds weird. Like Steam VR Home is like the, well, basically what you have in Oculus Home, right? Where you have that environment you are in, and it's it's your menu there. You can like meet up. Well, I don't think you can meet up with friends in Oculus Home their system Not yet, yet, but Not yet. Steam VR Home you can, and you can go to environments. You can dress up. You can also unlock uh, up objects that you got from from uh, games you played. Um, and the uh, HTC made a um, environment called Driftwood. It's, it's pretty old, but um, that's that's one of the places you can go to uh, within like Steam VR Home. Yep. It's like a, a a home pod, a spaceship, and it's like a, a little home that you can live in and also have your like VR menu in. Um, but now they added a bunch of Ready Player One Easter eggs in there for oh. you to discover. So, uh, yeah, well, I, I couldn't find the DeLorean, but there, there was an Iron Giant in there and, and the book from Ready Player One. And the, they also had a Vive in there, uh, just a prop. But if you turn it around and looked inside, you could see like a key in, in like the, the lenses. So that was kind of nice. Cool. On, the, uh, yeah. on the subject of that, I actually recently uh, finally got to try out the, the home version of, uh, of Oculus. And I have to say I was indeed like, I know you guys talked about that a while back, but I hadn't tried it. It's very impressive. I find mm -hmm. that uh, a really, really cool feature that, that Oculus has with that. And I think yeah. that, I mean, I haven't tried like the, the Steam Home like Nate described it yet, but um, I didn't, because I, I kind of loaded it up just to like, you know, have a quick look. And I spent like, I think maybe one and a half to two hours just like <laughs> messing around with it. Uh, just, yeah. I didn't do anything special, but just seeing what, what, what the options were, like putting yeah. some plants everywhere, like well, to yeah. make it like a little one bit question, nicer, Rowdy, like, One question, Rowdy, one question for you then. Yeah, go ahead. Did you bust open any crates? No. Yeah, you get, like, this is the crates. best thing in the whole game. Yeah. You get these golden and silver crates that you just get for like playing games. The more games you play, the longer hours you clock. You just get them, and it opens new items, and you can bust them open and then place them in your world or whatever. It's so addictive. That's it's very good. Awesome. It doesn't cost any money. It just costs you yeah. your time playing games, which you're doing anyway. So yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. A free, yeah, a free loot box. It's kind of scary, though, how addicting those loot boxes can be even in like a, a virtual environment. It's, yeah. it's, kind, of, it's kind of creepy. I'm yeah. like, I played oh no, I'm... like, am I going to get even more addicted uh, inside Don't do it. than outside? Don't do it, devs. Just Don't like put putting your rift your on and like putting your, you know, on the table, not playing any games, just so you can get them loot crates, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, <laughs> I got my loot crate fix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but that, 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 that is going to happen anyway. I mean, yeah. we, we spoke about this to like the the devs from uh, um, from other sons, and they mm. also said like you know we, we yeah. do expect this to happen later on. There's but nothing wrong. With I, I do like the idea of having like free items while you play, uh, and it's also cool. Like if you if you go into that home system, you can also. Uh, um, put all your games on the table and show how much you got. Like yeah. I once went into a reality check uh, VR. Oh, yeah. and, uh, oh my days. What? Well, that was like, uh, I was like, whoa, dude. Like he plays so many games, but uh, yeah, it's nice that you can just decorate it and make it like your personal home. And especially if you can invite your friends over, then it's going to be even more fun. So yeah. yeah.
Very cool indeed. Very cool indeed. So let's uh, start off with some uh, little bits of uh, news this week. So first up, uh, Arizona Sunshine has got some DLC coming out. Uh, Vertigo Games and Jay Walker's Interactive announced the first campaign DLC, Dead Man, for Arizona Sunshine. It's going to be playable for the first time on Valve's VR booth at GDC in San Francisco, which mm-hmm. we're going to be talking a bit more about later on. Uh, the Dead Man DLC is expected to launch for PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, Vive, Windows Mixed Reality and it's only going to cost you uh, $2.49 and €2.49 so uh, fairly cheap it's going to be coming out in spring 2018 And the premise of the DLC is it takes place in the final days before the apocalypse. Uh, The Dead Man DLC will drop you in an infested US missile base where you lead a desperate attempt by US Army Special Forces to con... Uh, contain uh, the expanding zombie outbreak. It's up to your squad to clear the base and launch a missile vital to stopping the zombie spread in the southern US states. So it sounds, that sounds cool. awesome. That yeah. sounds like a lot of rooms to me, you know? Initially, I like so the premise kind of, how... of before the big break outbreak yeah. so that you maybe had like a more mix yeah. of like NPC characters and zombies and I was kind of getting on board with mm. that but then when they're like, and you're inside. I'm a little bit like, <laughs> eh. We'll so this is some more detail about what's included. Uh, all new campaign mission telling a prequel story to Arizona Sunshine. Six new achievements. Uh, a new fully automatic submachine gun. A two-handed shotgun. Mm. A tactical handgun. Three new masks. Character customization options. It's so, good though. I do go. welcome it. I do welcome it because uh, yeah. Arizona Sunshine is a fantastic single and multiplayer yeah. game. Quick heads up though, guys. Yeah. If any of you are uh, ever streaming, uh, the one big fault... I don't know if they've corrected it since, but the devs expose your ip address on your screen uh which is a yeah, bad thing because i can oh, they do give away your yeah. location so uh, yeah. very few devs do that because they know better I'm, so anyway I'm, I'm i'm missing one thing in this list and and that's like a working multiplayer Ooh, that's salt um yeah, yeah. well you know I, i've had issues uh like zim said playing this with multiplayer co-op in the past like you say it does Never completely show off your uh, ip address I, I did get it working, um, but like you said, Zim, it's kind of okay for us that just record content because you can just cut that out. Yeah, exactly. If you're streaming, obviously that's a big problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's um, up there. It's live now. Everybody just look yeah. at my IP address. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get well, like Rowdy so and I tried it. I, I, did, I tried did probably it. four or five hours in two or three different sessions of multiplayer with people from all around the world. Like I was playing with a yeah. guy from Buenos Aires right. and stuff. Like I mean, So I strange. Because me and Nate tried it and uh, it never worked for us. No, never. We, we even like spoke to the developer while trying to fix this issue. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I just gave up in the end. I tried so many times. Rowdy, how long have we like... I think I, I, I gave up after like five, six months. I was like, Rowdy, yeah. you know what? I'm sorry, but I, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I give up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a breakup. I, I tried. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like a bad breakup. I'm sorry. It, 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 it's me, it not you. It feel it's me. like it. I was, I, was, I was really excited to give it a try. And we wanted yeah. to go for like a campaign because the campaign is so cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then we, we got it to work once, but it was like the, the wave-based thing. I was like, no, oh, yeah. why this one? Why does this one work? And not the campaign it's so unfair so yeah so yeah that is our first snippet of news next up uh <laughs> oculus have announced some duo packages Ooh. so mm, coincidence yeah. that it kind of releases a similar sort of time <laughs> that everyone's got 15 dollars in their stores <laughs> I, I, uh, I told store you, wallets i, told I don't you. know but the funny thing is they're 29.99 dollars <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is either pure coincidence or pure genius on Oculus's behalf because, like I say, these bundles uh, are really really good value bundles, but they're twenty nine ninety nine. So yeah, you're gonna have to double true. up on your fifteen dollars to, to get these. But I mean, that's that's business. That's just yeah, it is. It is. T- turn something bad into good and lots of money, and, of course. And and, it, and it's like good advertisement for the developers too, because there are some developers that are like, hey, my game is fifteen bucks, go buy mine. Yeah. And uh, I I even saw like guys from Apex Construct saying like, halt your credits because our game is going to come out next week. Please, please yeah. don't spend it yet. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So there's like a war going on with developers like use my like use the credits. For my yeah, company, I, I, my I, developers, it is, too, please. It is valuable. I mean, uh, it, is, it is. still yeah. pure money that they put in that account, and I'm sure that yeah. for 15 euros, you can probably like either yeah. get a re- real good discount on a on a good title, 
or yeah, uh, yeah. even buy like a full title uh, with yeah, that with that, with that yeah. amount. And I mean, your yeah. your choices are going to be looser too, because usually when you need to spend your own money, it's like you're just thinking for a week, like, okay, I got twenty bucks. Okay, hmm, what you <laughs> buy this time? And then it's like, oh, I got fifteen. Okay, wait, there we go. <laughs> so you buy something freaking random, but it's still yeah. it could be fun, you know? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> For these uh, these duo packages, uh, I'll go through the bundles. So the first one is Arizona Sunshine, like we've just talked about. Of so course. Arizona Sunshine and Super Hot together, which I think is like the oh, best wow. one. If you don't own either of these games, this is the package out of all of them to buy, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, the next up is Eve Valkyrie and Sprint Vector. Uh, okay. The next one is The Climb and Job Simulator. Oh, oh well, that combination. Yeah, okay. That's, it's a strange that's a combination, weird marriage. I gotta say. Yeah. Then it gets even weirder because then you've got From Other Sons and Ele Eleven Table Tennis. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How? How, how and, did and they then, come up with that? And then you've got Onward and Spark. So oh, both Spark competitive, I guess. Fucking dead. Uh, raw Data and Box yeah. VR. So out of that, uh, I, would, I, would I would probably know go what for I the Arizona get. Sunshine yeah, and Super Hot definitely. one. The, the two yeah, the two the great titles with both point. great single player. Is this is this like the second time they gave like credits to people? Because I remember that um, when Pharaoh Rights came out from Insomniac Games, as far as I know, it's like, mm. like a very like it was like a brawler, yeah. a, a third person brawler uh, without like the touch uh, controllers. It was like a gamepad one. I think that people were so well, they felt like scammed because the game was so bad that Oculus said like, okay. We just give you like what did they do, Zim? Do you like oh, remember? I don't remember. I did? wasn't affected did by they, it. I mean, did they, this... did they like give money back or something? Or uh, you were right. There I was th a credit of like a t of ten quid or something. I can't remember. But yeah. it, it, you're right. There was a second credit. I remember. Yeah, but it doesn't happen that much that Oculus gives like credits. No, you know, no, to, no. Um, yeah. And and also, I found out actually that um, you need to qualify for this. Uh, like a you know little store credit you don't get it as default and the, oh. the to qualify for it you need to have logged into your oculus rift on or after the first of february 2018 if you hadn't oh. played on your rift before that time then you don't uh, you're not entitled to this uh you know store credit so just if oh. just if you're aware i, I, have, you know. I have personal i got really i got not really excited because anyway um i, I got excited <laughs> because i got two emails from oculus one to one account and one to another account because i got two <laughs> oculus accounts one for yeah. kind of internal testing and where people should be able to see because if i'm streaming i can't show them that i've got a game in my library that you know is sensitive so i was like yeah 30 bucks um but like oh. you said mike the qualification i think on that one because it was it's been inactive for for a couple of months um right didn't oh. didn't didn't cash out so i got it on one not the other yeah so they just sent yeah. this email to everyone but it's yeah. not like you can just get the credits two sides like it so depends no, on when you they sent out the email first the so they sent the email and it the email went to everyone as kind of like a we're having a problem you know, if you, yeah. and then we're going to, you know, give something for this, but then only qualified people actually got the credit. Yeah. It's only kind qualified of scary got the credit to think that uh, they know exactly when you lock in. No. Of course, they know everything. What do you mean? Yeah, How are you going to detect, yeah. detect like external hackers and stuff intruding into your network? Of course yeah. they know. It's timestamp. Yeah, it's still, you know. They know what you're watching in, in virtual desktop. <laughs> Dude, they know. They know, <laughs> they know. I know. Like they've mapped. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Rowdy logged in at one a.m. again. I wonder but what he's doing. It's, it's the same with the Rift. You, like it's so hard to turn off. Like Oculus Home always pops up every moment mm, of yeah. the day. And then, like uh, last uh, night, I wanted to play uh, with my Vive, and I got now like two GPOs. Uh, so my Rift was like plugged in into one, and the other one was like the Vive was plugged into the other one. But then, like, Oculus Home, I had to close that before I could use Steam VR. It's like, ah, 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 you're not going anywhere. <laughs> not going to play on Steam until, like, you closed Oculus Home. But you need to, like, plug out your Rift to kill Oculus Home. Otherwise, it just comes back all the time. Oh, my God. There is, there is a good tool. Like, if you use the Oculus Tray tool, which is a, an external application, you can download yeah. it for free. If you right-click on it and go up, you can say stop Oculus service, and that will stop oh. it from opening. Oh, so nice. you could manage yeah. it that way in future if you're interested. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, moving on to our first uh, main topic is GDC, because GDC is coming up very soon. Uh, for yeah. those that you don't know, uh, it is a yearly uh, convention that happens uh, around this sort of time and is going to kick off on the 19th of March to the 23rd of March in San Francisco. Mm. So GDC is the world's largest professional game industry event. Join game designers, programmers, artists, producers, and business professionals for five days of unparalleled education, inspiration, mm. networking, and mm. for the go global game development community so tons of stuff we think are going to is going to be announced at gdc loads of new games loads of new hardware so i was intrigued to know what your sort of predictions are for gdc this year and uh, if you want i'll start it off with a couple of predictions of my own so i think that at gdc this year oculus are going to announce the release date for the oculus go i think that's going to happen so uh, after this date, you will know when our Oculus is, go, is going to be released because I'm, I'm pretty certain it's going to happen imminently. Um, I think they're going to show off uh, more of the Santa Cruz and my also prediction around the Santa Cruz is that they're going to give it its official name. So Santa Cruz mm -hmm. has been its prototype name for some time, but I think they're going to pr properly name it at GDC. And then, of course, they're going to be announcing some games and partnerships that they've been working on. I don't really have any predictions for that, but I think they will be like some big AAA titles, of course, from Oculus. Um, so, yeah, they're my uh, Oculus predictions for GDC. I wonder what you guys think of those predictions and if you've got any predictions of your own. Well, it's always hard like those any, predictions. Any... Sorry? It's always hard to do those kind of predictions. That's true. Yeah, no, I agree. But like, like Mike, do you have any predictions like next to Oculus as well? Like anything else, or is it just? No, 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 no. Stop <laughs> it! Don't bully Mike, guys. He's not an Oculus fanboy. Just, just you know, <laughs> yeah, that's why you got the pillow to hide. No, from bullies. Um, no, that's true. Like, uh, with you're the Oculus right. on it. Uh, 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 that is just my Oculus predictions. I don't really have any predictions for anything else because let's be honest about it. Everyone else has already shown their cards of what what they're doing. Vive uh, is showing Xbox. The fact... Yeah, I don't uh. think Xbox are going to be announcing any <laughs> VR content. Oh, that's a that's no. a that's Who a knows, nice rumor right there. Mm. I juicy. I I will I will bet you something <laughs> on that. Rowdy, I, I will quite happy. Hey, 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 we're not betting anything. I just said okay. doing prediction okay. is freaking hard. So, you so just yeah, go the, the easy the, the way. Reason, oh, Oculus, the, Oculus. <laughs> the, the reason why, uh, to, just, to justify it, the reason why I don't think, uh, I don't have any predictions of anything else is because Vive have already shown their hand with the Vive Pro that they're working on that is going to be coming out soon. They'll probably announce a release maybe at GDC as well. That would be interesting. Uh, PSVR, there's nothing really on the, the horizon. Uh, well, that's Valve, so... I Valve. actually think that ah, okay, Valve is okay. going to announce something. I, I think, think Valve details on some of their oh, games. Oh, here we go hit, again. Including <laughs> VR titles. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going down this hole again, but... No. <laughs> in the past, Valve have favored GDC for announcements. Okay. Oh, I, agree. Oh, okay. I, I didn't Mike, know that. Answer Mike's lovely question. Answer Mike's lovely question. Oculus Go... <laughs> I think you're right on that. I think they will release the, the but, release date. But, but, it was supposed to be out in Q1. Back in, get on with it, guys. If Valve would announce one game... <laughs> no, Rowdy. We're not starting this again. We're we oh, going to a fight again. <laughs> oh, just, one, just a quick PSA here. If you didn't listen in to last week's podcast and understand yeah. what all this commotion's about, then I recommend you rewind yeah. and go find that. Episode 27. Yeah, things got a bit, things got a bit heated. Chat. Yeah. Yeah. We almost broke up. No. We, we, we love to chit-chat about Valve, basically. Um, but yeah, um, I'm talking about Valve. <laughs> um, like, like I, I'm, I'm not that old, as you may know. You know, I'm still like a young god. Um, like Zim, uh, no offense. Um, you're one of the oldest uh, here. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Or is it Mike? I'm gonna get Mike? you, little boy. I, I think what it was you, think, right? Well, no, but like, what I want to, what I want to, sorry, sorry. What I wanted, to, what I wanted to talk about here is, is like, uh, like, how did Valve announce like all the other games they did? Did they ever like announce them on stage, or were they just like, hey, well, here uh, is our game on Steam because they own Steam, so it's like, why would you even have to go to GDC? It's not that relevant compared to their own platform. To give a stage on there to announce something or do a stream there, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, like if you can remember any of those like announcements back in the days, like how did they announce their other games? Yeah, so I mean, yeah. I remember there was um, there was this big Queen cover covered by Gabe Newell. He came on stage with like spandex and he was just 
kind of talking about the games and then all of a sudden there was this big cord that ripped out and then he just like ripped his shirt off and it said the orange box oh. just on the center. He had tattooed it on his the middle of his chest. Okay. <laughs> So GDC might be a possibility then. <laughs> it's very amazing. possible. It's very Ooh. possible. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, my prediction, I got only one prediction, uh, and that is uh, Vacation Simulator is going to be an open <laughs> world game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because you, you know that I, I ins like did like a, like a whole video on oh. like the uh, Job Simulator trailer. I never uploaded it, but it was like a reaction to their trailer of like two minutes, and I watched it like 10 times, and I discovered that I think it's like a little open world, not like like Skyrim, like or or It'd Fallout. Like it's just like a Which tiny. Which is kind of like device. the Sims, where yeah. you can go. Yeah, it's it's like like they got an open world as a menu, and then you can just go to certain places. That's what I think. That's that's how the trailer looks uh, looked like, and they will be showing that off uh, uh, some gameplay. I'm not sure if they are like like I think uh, upload and other websites and YouTubers are allowed to record it, so we will see some uh, stuff uh, from that and budget cuts new demo mm. yeah so we'll see what that like mm. will be all about mm. so before you went a bit crazy uh, i just want to clarify my thoughts on the whole <laughs> oculus thing because yeah i did yeah. have some oculus predictions but as i was saying vive already announced their vive pro psvr just announced their new headset like late last year you got pimax that might turn up to show <laughs> off the latest revision of their pimax 8k headset maybe and maybe announce a release when they're actually going to ship this to backers because they've been a bit quiet just recently on that front um, but maybe we'll see some more mobile headsets there as well. Maybe like uh, the Google Daydream Mirage or the Lenovo and the yeah. HP one and everything else. Maybe we'll see some more of those. Um, but I think mm -hmm. Oculus are going to be the major players at GDC but this year. What about games? Big? Yeah, games. I actually think, games? no, just I mean... in terms of hardware, Mike. Remember, it was, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I think it was the year before. GDC turned into this, um, sorry, is it E3 I'm thinking about? What was like, it was insane. It was like 25 different headsets were announced, mm. you know, from mm. all these different oh. colorful providers. Yeah. I think it was two years ago, yeah. uh, E3. Um, but it, I mean, we could have something like that, but I doubt it because 2017 mm. for VR was a bit of a slowdown, right? And, and I think yeah. content-wise as well. So I am expecting some surprising software out, which is good because the first quarter of the year, as we all know, has mm. been a little bit, yeah. a little bit slow. Yeah, yeah, but is, is GDC really the place to announce hardware? I, I don't really feel like that's the place no. to be. For I that. think Valve. Um, I think Valve need. I think Valve yeah. needs <clears throat> to sit, say something about but a VR like, game. Like, why would Valve go to GDC if you can pick so many? Like, I would go to the E3 myself if I was Valve. Yeah. But hey, uh, maybe that's maybe it. like like uh, going for a smaller stage can sometimes be much better for like. But, but also, I, I, uh, I don't want to go into the Valve away. thing, you know. It's yeah. Just, but E three E E three is some time away, isn't it? Right. So if you've got something that's, that's ready maybe, to release now, then you want to announce it now, right? So maybe hype. like 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 an announcement. Maybe yeah. that is. But like the actual yeah. demonstration and save that for E three. Yeah. 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 They definitely is perfect They've timing for a teaser because everyone's just waiting for news. Like sitting here mm. waiting for news <laughs> with their tractors like just feeding them into their mouth, you know, and they're just waiting <laughs> for something. Really, if I was a developer or a development team, I'd say get a feck in any kind of teaser trailer. And get it yeah. there so that people yeah. can be hyped and cover it. That's it. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like you said, uh, Zim, like we've, we, it's been a bit quiet on the game front. In terms I don't of really VR agree titles. with that, by the way. So, um, I don't. I don't. What? I don't think it's been, I don't think it's been quieter in terms of uh, VR releases. I just think that um, we as what, content good users. Ones, I think it has. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what, what, what good ones were there in 2016? Well, uh, maybe not 2016, but in 2017, there were some like real hitters. Funny. No, there's, there's, there's plenty. It was just, let me go back to my database. I will fucking show you, Rowdy. I'll no, no, show I, you next week. I mean, week. The, the thing is, we've gotten a lot pickier in, in terms of what we're playing. I mean, of course, we're not going to be playing like all of the wave shooters that we were playing in early 2017. <laughs> mm. And I think late 2017, a lot of good titles came out. Yeah, I'm just saying like it's been a bit quiet like the last three months. Gen, like Feb, past, March. Yeah, past I Christmas. Know. I like, mean, Skyrim we, is coming to HTC next yeah. week. Yeah. But I what think, what else, what else do you know that's now. coming out that's like a triple A release? Budget cuts yeah. still coming. But that's not triple A. Yeah, it's not. Well, what triple A do we have in the uh, in uh, that was from the ground developed for VR? It was only Doom. Well, what, like triple A is a, is a vague like term. <laughs> Lone yeah, Echo, <laughs> Robo Recall. You know, but are those, the, the, are we're those, talking. Are you we're talking we're but talking AAA about AAA titles. Do, yeah, because uh, Robo Rico was from Epic Games, the AAA developer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like like triple A games. But then VR Robinson is like the a... Journey is also is from Crytek. Yeah, triple A developer. AAA. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
Doesn't mean I, I, I mean, like, the term triple A is a little bit like there's uh, not really like triple, a definition. triple A for me is like Alchemy Labs, uh, uh, Cloud App Games. Uh, but this and, is what I mean. Like officially, like, they are not triple A, but like for VR yeah. standards, yeah, they yeah, are yeah, pretty yeah. good in what they yeah, are yeah. doing. But all um, I'm saying is that it's been a bit quiet from all of these uh, developers. Yeah. Like we don't have any uh, like real like anticipation I, for any big titles coming I, out soon. Uh, I don't know. I'm it's saying. like a mix. I do agree with Rowdy where like uh, we played so much stuff, so sometimes it's like. Yeah, mm. well, eh. And then, I no, have statistical analysis one, uh, which says otherwise. Actually, my okay. reviews since 2014 have gone more positive. You, it's hard to believe because I'm a feckin' <laughs> tough dude okay. when it comes to stuff, but, yeah. you know, actually, yeah, my, my audience pointed out to me, they're like, actually, you know, games are trending in a better direction, you know? Yeah, so, that's oh, yeah, what I mean. Respect. Yeah, so I, 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 I totally agree that we're like we're getting better titles, but what I'm saying is like we don't have anything to anticipate on the horizon right now. Like we don't have like oh yeah, this game is coming out. I'm really looking forward to it. Like other than the respawn title that Oculus are working with, like I don't really know anything else that's coming out to VR. It's always soon. it's always kind of like that in like the beginning of the year though. Yeah, like but that's why I'm hoping that GDC they'll be all these now. Some, some yeah. years yeah. had a better start than others. Like 2016, yeah. for example, had like a freaking nice start. That's because you yeah. want all the investors backing and just be like pump yeah. the money in guys the money's coming <laughs> out next year that's what yeah. it is but you know what's gonna happen is we're gonna see a little bit of a trickle i think uh for the next six months and then Ooh, something trickle. massive's gonna land for christmas okay save up your pennies I, i'm still christmas. hoping yeah, though bumps. by the way mike i'm not three. expecting sony to go quietly into this one i mean you said like oh they announced their headset revision that was a year ago in R and D. Like that was that mm. is not twenty eighteen. What about news. Moss? Moss was a great title. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I, I'm mm. you know I, Moss is one that I'm insanely jealous of because in this bit of dry season, that's yeah, the kind yeah. of game I really want to play. Yeah. Should just go get a PSVR. <laughs> Stop it, Zim. Stop it. <laughs> Stop spending oh, my money that I don't have. <laughs> That there were some good titles already this year. Yeah, it's just that it, it, they 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 can spice it up a bit, and I think like PlayStation will will totally do that. You know, yeah. like they they never disappoint. Yeah. Oh, they're all too God. busy making headsets. Too busy yeah. making headsets. Sky, Skyrim's coming to PC, no. which means Rowdy, that's Windows. Yeah. Windows is too busy making headsets. You know? <laughs> they they got enough. Yeah, headsets. Skyrim is coming. They can so. always make more apparently. Yeah, so that that is news. Skyrim is coming Mods. to PC. Mods. Modability yeah. support, holy fucking hell! That I, yeah. it, it, it just the penny that just dropped for me. Actually? That's insane. Is, yeah, is I'm pretty confirmed? sure it is confirmed. Uh, I saw numerous sources tweeting about it this morning. So, right. no, 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 about mod support, anyway. not that, that that it's releasing yet, but mod support. Oh, I don't know about mod support. Well? No, because that's don't I don't know, I don't know yet. for sure. Everyone, but if it is, it was for Fallout. So the assumption will be, mm. dear Bethesda, you did it for the other one. This one yeah. is its predecessor. Surely you're not going to shaft us. No, yeah. do, the, yeah. the, it's not a rumor. I mean, HSC announced it themselves. So uh, yeah, oh. everyone uh, is getting excited coming. over Skyrim VR on PC. Well, Fallout 4 VR still hasn't been fixed after many months. <laughs> I really, I finally released my uh, review of that. <laughs> wow. Hashtag sad. It is sad. four months later. Well, on April third. April third. It just it's underperforms, coming. right, Nathan? I mean, do you find? I, I find I, it totally playable. It's, it's not that it's. Yeah. Not I, I, are are you are you the spokesman of Bethesda now? Okay. No, <laughs> but I don't think. I think from what they've released, it's all been quality. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I agree. But it just like from from a technical perspective, it just doesn't run that smooth. Mm. But yeah. there are things like you know, like clipping through the walls and that kind of stuff. We talked about that. Uh, that you can just walk through them or take things. Yeah. Containers, but I, I'm the yeah. kind of person who doesn't do that unless I'm like you know showing it off or something. You are my, very my, curious. Yeah. yeah, I want to go deeper into the rabbit hole. Okay, uh, okay, too, too enough. enough, 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 enough. <laughs> right. So I would love to know the viewers and the listeners' <laughs> predictions uh, for GDC. Put them in the comments yeah. because we're going to be hanging around when this is actually live. So yeah. future Mike will be in the chat. When this yeah. actually goes live, I see. So just... I see a lot of exciting comments already. <laughs> well, that is amazing. Just st starting. To that is a great prediction. Rowdy. I think so, Rowdy. Rowdy. That is a great prediction. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rowdy, Rowdy, someone says a nice stream. Uh, keep it up, guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> say thanks. Wait, yeah. I'll, I'll type it. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are crazy. <laughs> right, this moving is the on. Most, most fun live stream ever. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I'm drawing you know, a line is... under it. I'm drawing a line under it. Right, moving sorry, on to our sorry, next Mike. topic, and that is Jurassic World Alive is coming to augmented reality. We recently said on a recent podcast that games need to have more dinosaurs. So it seems 
So it seems like the developers have listened to yeah, our feedback you know, it's and are now making a whole game about dinosaurs that we have. for augmented the kind reality. Of influence that we have. It's crazy. Who would have known? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, they, so, so you can have dinosaurs in real life everywhere you are? Exactly. In your pocket. I will never be alone anymore. Exactly. You'll have your pet, be... pet T-Rex. Wow. And today we're saying we want more sharks. So next week there will be a game oh, coming man. out with sharks. There, uh, I don't know if you guys are so clued into that, but Shark Week in the US is a fucking a massive thing. Like well, everyone okay. knows about Shark Week and Shark Week <laughs> during Shark Week is just amazing. And even the week after Shark Week, it's still Shark Week. When, so, when is Shark Week, Zim? I don't fucking know. It's April exactly. or something. It doesn't matter. So but we, when it's Shark Week, got... then it matters. You know? We already have more dinosaurs. Now we want more sharks. Right, hold, hold on, hold on. So, so we've got it. Jurassic World Live. Uh, Mike informed me about this one last week when we were getting ready and then we rolled it to this week. But um, I'm very two sides with this one because i was one of the dudes who was out there fucking running around with my family having a blast with pokemon go i absolutely loved it i thought it did incredible things for at least two months for loads of people i saw loads of people out met tons of people and i can't say i made any friends who i have to this day or anything but i have a load of battery packs and i still use them um, <laughs> but dinosaurs i'm just really curious to see the first game scene because this whole yeah. um you know the trailer especially when it doesn't have audio and have the like awesome T-Rex noise from the film mm. seems a little shallow. So it's a very much a mm. teaser and I don't know if I should get excited about this or not, but I'm kind of swaying towards not. Yeah. yeah. It's also worth noting that this isn't made by Niantic. So it's not made by the people that made Pokemon Go. Uh, they're actually still working on Pokemon Go itself. And then also they're going to be bringing the Harry Potter game, which is uh, Harry Potter Wizards Unite out so yeah. they're not actually making this one this is from a copycat and there's another few copycats of, out there as well so not only is there jurassic park coming there's also a walking dead game uh that's by next games and then there's also ghostbusters world which is another augmented reality game by creative labs uh and this jurassic park title is actually being developed by a company called ludia um so everyone's kind of jumping on last year's hype around Pokemon Go. And I guess as well, because Pokemon Go released around the summer, it was a great game to get everyone out, like you say, adventuring, yeah. uh, exploring their towns and cities and meeting new people, which was really cool. And I had the same experience as well. Like a bit like you, Zim, I didn't make any lifelong friends out of it, but I met some cool people along the way and it was a ton of fun. So I am kind of a bit curious about these AR titles, but out of the three, I'm probably more excited about the Jurassic Park one over the Walking Dead or the Ghostbusters one, mm. uh, just because Jurassic Park's freaking awesome. Um, can you can you maybe explain like you know um, what what do you already know about the game? Like what what is there already known about? Like what okay. can we do or? So so this is uh, from the developers. Um, players discover dinosaurs by locating them on a map and deploying an in-game drone to collect DNA samples. Oh. You'll be able to snap a photo with your favorite dinosaurs, level up the beasts you capture, and unlike in Pokemon Go, you'll be able to battle them with other players. The game's map screen, as shown in the debut trailer, even looks like Niantic's Pokemon Go AR game. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe they bought the license to, like, Ingress or something like that, and they've actually used the same mapping system in their game because it looks, like, identical. Unless they could just completely... Well, that, that's off. what I was going to say, Mike, is that if you don't have the data, and that was the whole point, Pokemon Go was a game yeah. that was built on top of an existing functional database that exactly. was globally mapped with pinpoints yeah. around the place. And I learned loads about, like... Things that you, you can't even learn if you're a tourist, you know, walking through a city. Like, they're talking about some etching on the side of a wall, a fountain, yeah, yeah. and how that was... I mean, that was actually kind of part of the fun for me, was learning uh, while yeah. exploring with my with my kids and my wife. And um, I don't know. I mean, if it doesn't have that, it, it sounds very unexciting by the description. Yeah, so the, the map looks exactly the same. And I would imagine it's going to be the same with these other titles. So, so it would be interesting, not that I know, but it would be interesting to see if Niantic sold off like white label exactly white label yeah like license license it you know <laughs> so they can just reskin it with their own like yeah. branding like jurassic park or ghostbusters or yeah. walking dead and then sell it as their own game but neantic must have something up their sleeves for the harry potter wizards unite game that will make it stand out from these and yeah. be still be the best go-to mm -hmm. experience yeah. 
And the thing is as well, like Harry Potter fans are really dedicated fans and way more so than these other IPs. So uh, I would say that uh, that's probably yeah. going to trump it. But mm. I do have some really great memories of being in the park. I don't know if you had the same experience, Zim, but there's a big uh, park near where I live and loads of people congregated there for, to play Pokemon Go together. And then people actually lost their freaking minds when like a Pokemon, um, what was it, a Pikachu uh, turned up and people were actually running, like like running <laughs> stampede oh, yeah. to go and get him. It was, it was that crazy. The thing that I always had with, because I, I played for a little while, like past the collecting, for me, there was not a lot of fun to it. Yeah, like, see, it was there... just like once I had one, I, I mean, I couldn't really do anything with it. I could show people like, right. look, I have this one. But right. for the rest, I wasn't really a lot to it for me i kind of yeah. missed that like because i loved like the the pokemon games on like uh, on game boy i, I played yeah, them so much and I, I don't know but a part of me was kind of expecting more in that direction that you so, could like fight to other trainers and you know mm. you could like train your pokemon and have yeah. like different techniques and you could like say what kind of attacks they were using but all yeah. of that wasn't i mean wasn't what there. i played at least wasn't part of it and i lost interest after yeah. like a week yeah, I, I I still think that the that the dinosaur one can be very cool. Like I, kids love dinosaurs, so for yeah. kids this is gonna be like it's, it's Rowdy loves dinosaurs. dinosaurs. It's it's next level <laughs> magic, you know, even that it it will maybe not work that well or not look that mm. good. It, it's still really nice, but the thing is, uh, as far as I know, there will be a new Jurassic World movie out this year, so this and is game. purely there. For advertisement, and you guys know we we talked yeah. about many uh, VR movie experiences. Maybe this is going to be the first AR movie experience. Let's see if the level of quality is better than, let's say, a, a game where Jumanji. you need to uh, uh, scream Jumanji and you need to pick up the rock and just move him to places. We you know? please have Nicolas Cage getting eaten by a dinosaur. So who knows? It could be like like it could be maybe it's like a great game. I mean, it's the same with Harry Potter. Like the Harry Potter Lego games were freaking great, yeah. even that they were still promoting the movie. So yeah. it, it can happen, but it depends. So the, we'll so like Rowdy says uh, in Pokemon, you couldn't actually battle other players. You could battle people at gyms, um, but you couldn't battle people directly. Whereas in this uh, Jurassic Park game, you actually can battle each other. So that is one mm. bonus, I guess. Well, um, I mean, the, the battling at gyms wasn't really a battle, right? I mean, no. you just put the Pokemon there and if it died, then... You're kind of screwed. Yeah, but uh, Nikki is completely right, actually, that this is actually going to be released around the same time as the movie, which is called Jurassic World The Fallen Kingdom. And that's coming out on the 22nd of June, which, ironically, is my birthday. So, you know, maybe I'll go and well, see congratulations, it. Congratulations, uh, Mike. Have you guys future. seen the uh, the game that they're making as well? Like the more like zoo type, uh, uh, like zoo tycoon type of game that they're making? With Jurassic Park. Is it a VR game? It looks... No, no, no. It's a regular platform. Yeah. A, a regular 2D game. Yeah. I, know, <laughs> Sorry, I, know. I know. Not boring. interesting. Boring. We don't play pancake oh, games, Rowdy. Ah. This is a VR podcast. Get Rowdy, off. Get off. <laughs> don't join the dark side, Rowdy. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> Sorry, Rowdy. You can stay. You can stay. Um, so, uh, I'd be interested <laughs> to know, also, because I will be here in the future, uh, what oh. AR game would you like? So, if you could have a sort of Pokemon Go style game with any franchise available, what would it be? I'd be curious to know. So, let me know in the comments. Um, Dinosaurs. For better. <laughs> but I think Ra Rowdy, Rowdy made a really good point um, just to mention about Pokemon Go because my wife and I, um, we spun off, we made a game because of the fact that what happens with with Pokemon Go is it levels off at the top, right? You're collecting, 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 yeah. and also the difficulty gets to the point where it's like, just very unsuccessful later on. There's no feedback and it's just like, it just turns into this grind fest, right? And it's mm -hmm. it's it's like, it's just the, you lose the fun almost completely. Then they released the second series Pokemon. It was like a little uptick to say, oh, I can find some new stuff again. Mm -hmm. But there really isn't much gameplay there. And I'm really interested to see an AR game that becomes pervasive. And maybe I'll tell you what I would like, Mike. Um, I'd like to see something that was that was you know how like Daisy is this persistent, um, almost I don't know if roguelike is the right term to use for that, but anyway, single death and you lose everything and then you start over again. I'd love to see mm. a game like that where a reset button happens um, mm. if if you do something wrong in the game, yeah, and like so that. you're actually like it's a survival game, but it's AR. I'd love mm. to see that. Like you could find stuff around the world that helps you survive. Mm. I've not seen anything like that yet. 
And, and just while we're on the topic of mobile games, uh, for for those of you that uh, enjoy Fortnite, that is actually coming to mobile as well. So mm. Fortnite will be coming to mobile, which is again bizarre. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Is, is that a VR but... game? Shut up, Rowdy. It's my, it's my show. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, is it well, Mike? Uh... Yeah, so uh, I, no, but I th- I like that that uh, uh, like uh, uh, way of surviving, uh, Zim. I think that's that's yeah. that's really nice. What I would also uh, would like love to see is maybe like a Nintendo kind of game. Oh yes, you know? or uh, some kind of Tamagotchi in, in in like AR style. I don't know. I know a girl uh, who's doing it actually. She's she's working on a project. She was looking for funding at OC4, um, who is doing a pet style. Uh, VR game. I don't know if she. It was. It was in um, Unreal actually, and I don't know if she was in trouble. But uh, like, I would love it. I would love it. I, Nintendo Dogs. I think you you hit it on the head, yeah. and it would sell like fucking pancakes. Nintendo Dogs. Nintendo, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Mike's reaction. Do you know, do you know not, nothing about Nintendo Dogs, Mike? Come on. Uh, <laughs> Mike went like this. Nintendo Dogs. <laughs> I mean. I mean uh, the, that's that's the thing. Some people like are not allowed to have uh, a dog yeah, or exactly. something else or pets. So having like mm. an AR game where you can because like Nintendo was not just a uh, dogs running around. You could trade items together. You could visit with your dog to yeah. someone else their place. You exactly. had different. It was like very addicting and and it had like a nice progression system. So I don't know. did have dinosaurs. I, I spent many hours in there. No, well I think there was like a dinosaur pet. I, I don't know if that counts. Uh, a shark no Sharknado AR game would also uh, I think Rowdy would like that. Definitely. Right. Yeah. You need to like escape from the Sharknados that attack your town. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on to yep. these from these crazy bunch to something else that is completely crazy. <laughs> and that is a Japanese sweet company has announced a crazy <laughs> VR attachment to oh, a headset. Goodness. So Japanese company Pucho, uh, who eat who make sweets, not eat sweets, so they make sweets. <laughs> they probably least, eat them as well. They probably do eat them as well, to be fair. Um, they made an attachment for a headset. So the, the attachment itself is actually like a mechanical arm that attaches to like a, it looks like a Gear VR. Uh, and you can place a little Pucho sweet in the, in the, the little vice grip of the uh, mechanical arm. And then when you're in VR with your virtual girlfriend, of course, because that's naturally where you'd be. Uh, when she uh-huh. feeds you a little virtual sweet, then the mechanical arm swings around and puts the sweet in your mouth. So it actually feels like your virtual girlfriend is feeding you sweets. <laughs> but it, uh, it, it also go, it goes like this, right? like, uh, Pucci? Yeah. Ah, and like she pulls it away, and then you see the arm like moving away as well. Yeah. And she goes like, like a little tease. Clo- like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah. So, the, the best, the best oh. part in the trailer, the best part in the trailer is where like the old guy is trying to do it as well, but he, oh, he can't so find it. So. No, 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 no! I was just shuddering at that. Like yeah. when, 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 when there's the guy trembling because he can't find the, the candy. I just there's something wrong with that for me. I cannot watch this. And yeah. Mike. I'm sorry, this looks like some kind of weird sex toy. I can't, this is not, I mean, this is coming out of Japan. They're known for this stuff. That, someone's yeah. going to use this for the it's wrong thing buddy. is all I'm but saying. Hey, 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 don't hate. Like, Mike has one uh, home. Like, I, I did, tried I, one of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. That, yeah. Oh, I did. fuck, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I did. I did, uh, did, I did a, a video covering it. this. Yeah, and yeah, I did kind of uh, made, made my own version of it. So, yeah. Uh, what? With a, a man a, with a manfrotto arm. <laughs> but, I don't know um, what that is. But how was it? It was next level, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I I don't, uh, I don't like like there there's so many options you, you you can have with this like eating machine like she so has, many like, things good... you can put in your mouth. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean like you, it could be a virtual girlfriend. It could also be something totally else. <laughs> I don't know. Like you could you could just uh, use your imagination here in the yeah. chat. I would say we, we would but, love uh, to see the chat. Look. <laughs> the chat's just going crazy. What would you but, choose to put in that little mechanical but, arm? But, but like, what what would be the price of this thing? Well, uh, funnily enough, um, I see. The thing is, I don't know if this is real or just a marketing stunt. I, I, I can't be sure. So I actually reached out to Pucho and said, "Would you please send me a real one? I'd love to check it out and talk about it on the podcast, <laughs> and maybe send me some sweets as well because I'd like to check those out as well." <laughs> yeah. But um, like you said, uh, Zim, the funniest thing about this trailer is like that when the mechanical arm swings down, just hits a guy straight in the face. <laughs> 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 It's just like he just smacks him in the face. It's just like the the most elegant, uh, unelegant thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh. But um, 
I just thought it was so so funny, so so funny. But only also in Japan, the, the right? Also, the two guys, how so excited they, they are to like to oh, like try it out. It's it brilliant. It is. Like, it is like the hype is real. The hype is real. They they're loving it. So wait wait wait. And then you, you describe the girl like. No 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 no. <laughs> I, I I mocked it up with a um uh, a camera arm like like this. Oh, yeah, that's what you meant. So okay. Yeah, so uh, so I, I I put the headset on and and, and ate the little sweet <laughs> of the, the thing and uh, yeah it was uh, pretty pretty cool. So uh, yeah, but maybe, I think, maybe this I think will be when... the future of eating sweets. Who knows. <laughs> But as you said, like it seems like it's a Gear VR, and then that arm is attached to that. But let's say you have like a 3D hat, then you do have a problem, right? Because it's too. Then you it's would, you would never be able to. And maybe you say with, like a, a, with a Pimax or with a Rift, like it, it seems like you really need a mobile VR headset to be able to use this. Or they can make a longer arm so you can extend it. There's like well, a package that you can well, add maybe extra it's, stuff to it. Maybe it'll be compatible with the Oculus Go. Who knows? <laughs> it's 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 just <laughs> a prototype. Nice. It's not red. It's like some random Asian dude that stands behind no, the curtain Rowdy, that presses a button dream. and then goes like. No. It's not. It's, I thought it was. It doesn't tracked. work. You've broken. You've ruined it. You've ruined the illusion. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but maybe you know if if we can get a hold of Pucha, maybe they can send us four of them. We can Dude, all try seriously. it out live on the podcast. I, 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 would, I would be up live. for that. I would, yeah, let's, let's <laughs> I do, would do that. Yeah, Pucha, Pucha, if you're listening, send us some sweet uh, please, please attachment arms. We love you. Do your little send trailer. It to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'd love to know in the chat if you've uh, seen any weird VR accessories yourself. Let us know I, what I, ones. Yeah, you've I seen you uh, it's opening a wide hole there mike you yeah. gotta be yeah. careful yeah. asking yeah. that question yeah. around especially me. especially if you go to uh you know my twitter because <laughs> <laughs> i i sometimes love posting those kind of things especially because indeed like you said sim there's a lot of those sex toys going around and mm. they're getting quite uh, i haven't tried them yet uh, <laughs> <laughs> next the, sponsor for rowdy's the, channel <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised how many emails I get from, from people like that. I, I do it's too. No I, I, I no joke. I get followed by uh, by yeah. pouring this and pouring that. It's it's it's, it's insane. But they send they send out emails and asking me if if I can try it for the channel. I don't know if they know how YouTube policies work and all of that. Yeah. But you it's can't really do that kind of stuff. It's for science, it's for science. Rami. You've got to yeah. you've got yeah. to educate I everyone know. and let us all yeah, know what the experience is like. Yeah. I'll consider. Take one for the team. <laughs> te te technically, you could just review it. It's just uh, you need to use some smart yeah. tricks. Uh, talking about Twitter, by the way, uh, links are in the description below. Follow us all. There you go. <laughs> nice, nice little plug there. Nice little plug. Thank you. Uh, what? what? Talking of plugs. Oh uh, Jesus, Mike! Come on, man! Come on! Just use a different word for fix it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I won't be talking. I won't. <laughs> 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 Mike. Oh, this is so bad. I won't, I won't be talking about plugs. So uh, cut that out. Cut that next, out. Next talk. Cut that out. Cut that out. We'll get demonetized. Right. Uh, right. Game, game, game face, Mike. Game face. Right. Yeah, next sorry. topic. Uh, Roller coaster tycoon joyride is coming to VR. <laughs> so uh, talk. Yeah. <laughs> So Atari recently announced they'll be bringing, bringing Roller Coaster Joyride to PSVR. The PS4 exclusive will be enhanced for PSVR as an optional extra, but will be fully playable outside of wow. VR. So this, all my, this also marks the company's first foray into uh, gaming for, for a long while. They've sort of been out of the game for some time. But it seems a shame to me that they aren't bringing this to PC because really when I think of Roller Coaster Tycoon in my mind, like PC is the platform mm. that it kind of really evolved in and really grew as this yeah. big, huge thing. Not, not PlayStation. Um, and like uh, we talked about last uh, week or the week before about like Rolling Line, uh, that train simulator game, um, where you could design a track and then you could go into VR and ride it. Well, that kind of seems what you can do in Roller Coaster Tycoon Joyride. So you plan out your roller coaster track wow. or you can yeah. build your amusements and then you can go into VR and ride them in first person. But mm. at heart, I think this is just a normal pancake game with a kind of VR gimmicky add-on to it, essentially, mm. for PSVR. Yeah. Add-on. And it doesn't so, have dinosaurs. So you want to? So. so you're. There might be. Uh, might be DLC. Nah. Yeah, they they will have dinosaurs for sure. You can like you know design your park with like different themes. But mm. so you're you're saying it, it like you don't know for sure if this is like a a uh, like part of VR experiences or or more like something they really try to do whatever they could. 
Like no, no. And then it feels like a, like I'm holding a gamepad and then I use that and then it's like tracked and I need to just move things away. Like how? No, no, no. So that? you don't actually build the park in VR from what it sounds like. You build the park on the sort of flat pancake version of the game with your uh, PS4 controller and then you can actually go and ride attraction. your rides in VR. Yeah. So I love, kind of... I love, I love the idea of, of like just building it from top and, and yeah, just exactly. then go and I then know. zoom in and then... Oh my, yeah. and then eat like 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 candy in the meanwhile while you're like yeah. in first person and then ride some 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 like that could be yeah, yeah like that. Then I need one of those machines, you know. No, but I do really like that idea. And uh, uh don't worry peeps, if you got far packs you can play it with Planet Coaster and it's really fun. Mm, interesting. But, but we've already I do like this. the idea though. We've I, I think it's the same game. It's already it's, we've had it since twenty fourteen. No limits too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but I, I, I do it. like the idea of like uh, merging the two together though for PlayStation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's been a, that's been done a lot. That you have uh, you have Resident Evil who did it. Like you have a VR mode, yeah, uh, and you can play the full game then. But I do like the uh, it's like basically like you, you buy the game, and if you have a PSVR headset, you have a little extra. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. you so you like those blenders, Roddy? Because I don't. I'm, I'm basically no, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I, I like those blenders. I'm not, I'm not saying it because I never played roller coasters. I, I, I'm, I'm not anymore. No, 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 no. So I'm saying, like, if you take a, a 2D game and you tack on some piece, some segment of it, like Gran Turismo did, like Tomb Raider did, hmm. like, are you, are you, would you rather a game with a tack on to a just flat 2D game? So a, an extra, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mind that. Yeah, I do like that. If it's done well, why not? Hmm. I think you have to go beyond, for me, you have to go beyond a certain yeah. uh, percentage. Like, Resident Evil 7 was enough. It was like 80% of their stuff was VRified. Yeah. You know, if it's 20%, in my view, you can feck off. No, no, <laughs> like, stop I'm, teasing I'm, me. No, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not comparing Resident Evil here, but what I'm saying no. is, like, I like it that they're developing a game. You know, it's, it's not meant to be a VR game, but they saw the potential of, like, you know, people who have a VR yeah. headset... Mm. It's a nice extra if you can also go into the rights, and mm. I don't I don't see that as a as a negative thing per se. I wish more games that would do right. that because sometimes I play a, a regular game and it, you know it would be cool if I could just stand on this hill here, put a hat yeah, on, sure. and look how how the hill looks yeah, like. Okay, no, that's true. Like they, or they can have decided or... to not do it at all, so like it's yeah. there. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. But still, I, actually, I mean, like like PSVR I would right? love to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say because on on console, I actually have more heart for them. On PC, I'm a little bit colder. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't happen like, on PC that much, to be honest. Yeah, mm. well, they're more limited on the platform in terms yeah. of just getting the stuff, the content up there. I mean, it's months, yeah. months to get your stuff even onto the store. Mm. Yeah, but of course, but, I prefer a, a full VR release yeah. or a, you know, yeah. that nothing beats that. But yeah, yeah, I think something. I think I sort of echo your thoughts, uh, Rowdy and Nathie's really in that. Um, you know, it's nice that this exists. It's nice that they're thinking of VR, but it would be nice just to have a game built from the ground up in VR that we could just build yeah. our park in VR as well. That would have been the better option. And also the fact that it's PSVR exclusive. Yeah, I've got to deal with it, but, you know, all those things. <laughs> the thing <laughs> that I don't like is to get selling. something. <laughs> you know, there's, 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 there's a mis-selling that happens because, like, convention floors for ages, like the Gran Turismo, you know, brand and how much they pushed Gran Turismo around the VR show booths and then it came mm. out, and it was such a fragment of the game when they desperately needed something to replace the disaster piece that was Drive Club on PSVR. Mm. Um, so I don't know. Like, for me, it's definitely a, it's a very mixed feelings. Yeah. Because it's, it also depends how, on how they hype that up and how much they advertise yeah, this. If they are, like, point. humble and they're like, you know, we just added this and... Yeah, yeah. I think that's out. the case though. Then it's fine, but if they are like, oh, uh, VR is so immersive and go yeah. into every ride, blah, 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 and it's like, you know, if, yeah. if, if, if the, the expectations are too high for this, then I'm afraid it, that people are going to hate it. But mm. like, as long as they just keep it as a, as a nice little feature, then I mean, more games, uh, like in my opinion, more games can do that where they're like, hey, we got a nice view. You can just watch this in VR. It's not that like a big of a deal, but we added it because we think it's. You know, this is this is one makes sense because you do want to ride a roller coaster you built. So, yeah. So whilst on the topic of roller coasters, what are the best roller coasters that you've experienced in VR? I'd love to know. Oh, what Easy. about you? Because you you've pretty much ridden them all, right? Is it? I've done them all. <laughs> I've basically done them all. I've done every single roller coaster game on the Oculus Home Store. W what um, are your top five? <laughs> if you've got a top five. 
they're all in no limits no limits too which is a 30 quid well well when i bought it it was a 30 quid game so it's no not cheap too. um but it has the 2d so you can build your own coaster in 2d and then you can go ride it in vr and it's awesome uh, is this uh only on steam or is it on oculus all, home as well oh, only on steam i'm pretty sure okay well what yeah. do we what do we call like a roller coaster is also a game that is like fully on rails so like you know mm. some kind of like just like a, a, a more just like a experience. rush of blood right rush of blood it'd be uh because that's not really a coaster game but it's a rail shooter right mm. yeah and that, that one game uh hooten tooten shooting gallery I don't know. Is that, that a roller coaster? What was that again, Rowdy? What? <laughs> what was the Root, name? Hooten, Rooten, Tooten, something like that. Uh, shooting gallery. You do know that in games, in games then. I know Ghost Town that... Mine Ride. Yeah, that's the one I want yeah, to Ghost Town Mine Ride is quite anything, good. I, I like... thought it was going to be shite, but it's actually. Is that a roller coaster? You, you, would well, you define that as a roller coaster? Yeah. Uh, there's enough uh, yeah, roller coasters that you in walk from one part to the other. I would also define Thumper as a roller coaster because it's basically on a track. Yeah, but I mean that's a third. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I don't it's know. close enough. Know. Third person uh, roller coasters. Uh, I don't know if that counts, but well, it's not really. It, I mean, it's it's just... pseudo third person, right? Because you're right above the the track, and really <laughs> yeah, all okay, you're seeing I... is track and I... big ass bad guy in front of you. I, I, there's no there's no plan for what like kind of like, but um, for me it's it's uh yeah uh, no no limits for sure i did like uh, a titanic uh, roller coaster on there like it was built through the titanic ship it's kind of funny um and um what also like there's another good one uh, from summer funland you know mm. that roller coaster mm. um it's it's yeah it's kind of short it's not the G2 it, it's a thrill one. Well, it was the G2A one, but they their license expired, so they relaunched it, uh, and now it's just a clean oh. one. It's still the same roller coaster. Um, and when you buy Summer Funland, you also get a well, you could call that a roller coaster where you uh, ride Batman's uh, motorcycle. So mm. it's it's like on the rails because you don't you can't control it. So I I would consider that as a roller coaster. Mm. And then last but not least, I played one called Legends. It was kind of like with a minotaur, some kind of. That's from an Irish uh, studio. Yeah, I know him. Uh, it's from Coast of Legends. It's not bad. It's, not it's in... like it's very kind of like Roman esque, but there's a lot of penis in that. Just gonna warn you. <laughs> That's the only VR very, game I've seen with so short. much. Too much yeah. for your limit. Was Too it? much for my so, limit. Right. <laughs> you have a <laughs> limit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you mean you don't? Got their limits. <laughs> You're limitless on on, on I'm, that. I'm limitless, man. I'm, I was born in Europe. You know, that's true. <laughs> so liberal, so liberal. Um, so yeah, I played, I played so many of those roller courses on my cardboard headset uh, back in the old days that oh I kind of got sick of them and never touched them again. Well, yeah, wait, we didn't I'm, even talk about the initial demo from Oculus themselves. That roller coaster what, the was Epic great. Games the one one. With the track the castle one. Yeah, the one from mm. the castle. That was mm -hmm. great. That was the first time I've ever yeah, felt like, was super I mean, it was fast. my first go in a VR headset and I literally stepped into this coaster and when the thing, you know, jogs down and left and right and stuff and then jumps up, and there's a break in the track and you're in yeah. the air, my stomach was like, whoa, God, what the hell's <laughs> going on? I mean, it's first time in VR and you go on a coaster. It's not necessarily the most comfortable experience, but um, yeah. it, I, it's very That's memorable. Fun. Yeah, so going question. back to the good old days, uh, Zim, do you also remember uh, uh, Birdie Kingland? Holy shit, that was great! That was, Birdie <laughs> Kingland was so good! The that was is, a roller coaster! There's, there's so much that is dead. And I, I mean know, dead to rights, still, dead, yeah, dead, dead. To... That you can't play yeah. anymore. Like this stuff. No. It's so good. These Birdie guys will King never know. Like, They'll never pass. know, Nathan. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These these new wave kids that don't know what they're missing. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm intrigued about No Limits too because these uh, amazing <laughs> coasters that you rode, Zim, yeah. Did you They're make these real. coasters yourself, or did you? Were they pre-made? Pre-made. Mine, mine all sucked. Um, okay. <laughs> but and also, I don't have much patience for non-VR stuff, to be honest. Anymore, I, I just, I just don't. But um, okay. There was one in particular that looks like a kids' ride, which goes for about four minutes. It's a German coaster. A lot of these are real-life coasters that wow. are yeah. modeled. By the way, No Limits Two is used by people who construct real coasters. Full physics, full sound. It's, 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 it's winning on every front. Wow, I've really never, classy... I, I, I don't think I've ever even heard of this game before, so I need to check this yeah. one out. It's Me neither, really but that's because I well. kind of avoid them. <laughs> yeah, it's it, 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 it's weird. Um, 
Anyway, you'll see it on well, Saturday because I'm running the trailer. Uh, well, well, <laughs> so you can see well, that, what, that, that, uh, that. what it looks like. But it looks like a coaster game. And I'd say that, you know, it's it's been out since 2014. So texture-wise and that, there's also loads of tracks that other people created. Like there's a Jacksepticeye okay. coaster that he made that he put up that you can go and ride. So cool. like, it's a it's a very well-known title in the yeah. roller coaster sphere. <laughs> it's the daddy. Yeah. But the best the best part of of like no limits is the fact that you can speed up your uh coaster as fast as you want and then this happens. Can I show it? I I yeah, hope so. I got you big. Uh so here we go. So I decided to well speed it up. Oh wow. go like this fast. And then I was going even <laughs> Wow. So that fast must have been forwarding. pretty insane. It looks like I, I I'm speeding it up, but this is how fast I put it like it can go even faster, but... Oh, my <laughs> days. That's making me feel sick just watching your phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh uh, it's funny. God. You have, like, a menu there, and it really feels a little bit like like a DK2 kind of experience, too. It's not mm. not very, like, VR-proof, uh, but it's also not bad. It's like mm. meeting in the middle. It's like one of those... Like, you need to like roller coasters, in a way, to have this... this like game in your library you know i just okay. realized that nathan and i need to get together for kind of a little one-to-one -one cast here of of the good old days and uh <laughs> talk through all of the old dk yeah. one and two demos me, me and mike are getting to get a 230 too. right still. Yeah. We're, we're gonna talk about interesting stuff Poof. yeah new kid <laughs> stuff <laughs> anyway we're gonna be talking about the ar bose uh sunglasses that are coming soon <laughs> um uh, yeah so that is our next topic, the final topic. AR are dipping their toes. No, Bose are dipping their toes into <laughs> AR toes or balls. augmented reality. Uh, loads of companies are sort of getting into immersive tech just recently, and Bose are the latest with their AR glasses. However, there's a twist with these glasses: is they're not like uh, the Vaunt, which we covered a few episodes ago, which kind of have a a laser that beams stuff directly into your eyeball. These Bose uh, glasses are actually just audio only ones. So they're augmented reality, but without any visual aspect, they're just audio only, which is kind of That's interesting. That's so cool. Move. Yeah, kind of interesting. Obviously, Bose are well reno renowned yeah, yeah. for their, whoa, their audio whoa, whoa, quality. Tell, me, tell us more. This is very... I believe it's bone conduction. Cool. So it's not actually bone conduction. Is it actually just speakers? Um, it is speakers, but they're supposed to be uh, sort of... The way they've designed the glasses and they kind of sit in the frames, they're near to your ears, so people around you can vaguely hear them, but it's not going to be too overwhelming. Like, you're not going to piss people off on a train or anything like that. Um, but Bose actually unveiled this new tech at South by Southwest uh, in Austin, Texas last week, where obviously where all the Ready Player One stuff was going on. Uh, but these glasses, they're kind of like a, a 3D printed prototype just to show off the technology. There's tons of other applications they're considering, like... Um, uh, bicycle helmets and earbuds and other technology as well for this uh, aug augmented reality sort of audio system that they've developed. But these uh, glasses, uh, the ones that they've showed off, uh, featured integrated motion sensors, including a nine axis sensor, which can tell which way uh, you're looking and which direction you're moving. Um, it syncs up with your phone via Bluetooth to take advantage of uh, GPS and other applications on your phone to sort of feed you information as you walk through the real world. So uh, small speakers built into the glasses stems feed audio to the wearer. And the idea is that you can sort of walk along a street and then when you tap a little sort of button on the side of it, it's like a little touchpad. Um, you can look at a building, for example, and then the information about that building will be relayed to you in audio form in your ears. So you can find out maybe about a historic building or, you know, the reviews of this burger joint that you're looking at. Whatever it may be, it will kind of give you the information relevant to what you're looking at. Which sounds kind of interesting. Um, I'll and, tell you what uh, sounds really interesting, Mike. This is an awful idea that just came into my head because of the TV show I'm watching with my wife. But I can imagine there will be a crowdsourced rating system for people on a 1 to 10 scale, how pretty people are. And then the, your little glasses are going to tell you, oh, that's an 8, that's a 9. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this, is, but, this is going down a dangerous road. Well, there is no camera. There is no camera built into this uh, these glasses, so it's not going to know. So, okay, so, um, so but I, I get your points in like like that's like AR could be like a social rating system yeah, yeah, where sure. you're pressured to you know. Yeah. But uh, it's it's interesting what you're saying here. So 
uh, is it linked to a, like a Google database then? Because I don't think it's going to like save up new information. No, uh, no. So it, it syncs to your phone. So it will use your phone yeah, uh, internet connection and, uh, to reach out and gather all this information from different applications. So because what is, is it just going to tell you like bakery uh, 19 uh, something? And then it's like, how is well, this going? Because it needs to tapping. sound. Uh, yeah. Well, well, this is the thing. They're working uh, with uh, developers at the moment. So this is like a prototype. They're going to be shipping out 10,000 uh, 10, of these prototypes to devs and eyewear manufacturers to say, this is our new platform. You know, develop your apps for this and also maybe model some of your, you know, uh, designer glasses around this platform. And uh, what they're doing is they're providing $15 million in funding for these developers <coughs> to start creating their applications for this platform already. Um, and there's people like Yelp and TripAdvisor that are already on board and it's trying to sort of make their applications available for this platform. So it's kind of cool. You know what I think for what this will be a great application? Mm. Uh, people with a visual disability. Oh, mm. well. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think I think is uh, even if they're walking on the road that they know what road they're on. If uh, they work together with government so that they can, for example, know when they're next to a traffic light, yep. uh, what restaurant they they need to go to, giving directions to them, it will. If they're smart, they really go into into that kind of field to try to like augment the reality for those kind of people. Yeah. Uh, because I think there's a, a huge potential for those kind of uh, yeah. Those even kind Alzheimer's, of right? If, if you notice yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the wearer is give me too the far directions away to home. Direct, to direct them home. Yeah. 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 Um, the yeah. other thing Definitely I was thinking like was that. tourism. Like people who get on a tourist bus. How many people you know walk around a, a museum or get on a tour tour bus or something? You could totally have these things programmed so that they're doing the job of the person who's narrating, mm -hmm. and then you don't pay that person. But the other great thing well, would be around uh, Zim on the mention uh, uh, talking about like sort of tourism. If this had some sort of built-in microphone in, which I'm, I'm not sure if it does or not, but if it could translate to you in real time, that would be really useful as well. Like if you're abroad, you know, it could that would just what, be an epic use, uh, use I case. I know someone else has caught the um, caught the, the technology name, but I think it's is there it is, Google who's yeah, Amazon the, and Google yeah. are doing. There is something like devices. that available right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's really yeah. neat. Yeah. yeah, so something like that would work really well. Also, like a, future got, boys got geofences uh, marked around certain locations so you can have a geofence mm. around your GTFO, gym gtfo so uh gtfo <laughs> get off my lawn kids as soon as, <laughs> as soon as you go to the gym it automatically starts playing your like your gym playlist or something like that um but obviously being bose the sound quality is obviously going to be top notch uh but they're looking at other sort of manufacturers to take on this as, as a as a sort of technology to integrate into their own glasses so like ray-bans and oakley's for example would be a good shout because you know inherently people that wear those oh. are sort of on the cutting edge um, of course so, yeah. like there's a great another application here snowboarders snowboarders mm -hmm. already have the big visors and stuff i mean i can't wait for snowboarders to have like kind of ar augmented in, into, into that but also the audio side for uh, tree on your location, right not getting knocked away in a <laughs> snowstorm kind of thing yeah definitely but it, what did you fun. say roddy tree on your right <laughs> yeah yeah calling mounting rescue <laughs> <laughs> you seem to have broken both of your legs <laughs> you suck <laughs> you're screwed um, so I've always liked the idea of uh, audio built into a pair of glasses and I actually kickstarted something that was very similar to this called um, Zungle Panther on Kickstarter oh, and that was a, a pair of uh, shades that had um, bone conductive speakers in oh, yeah. um, and really I, I was really I, I was really hyped about it like so excited and when they finally came I was really excited but they were absolutely <laughs> awful they were so so bad so uh, you know I kind of fallen back now I've got like a set of you know, Apple AirPods now and, you know, a pair of, a pair of Oakleys, they're sort of my go-to. So unless this can be doing anything better than that, obviously it can with some of this uh, features whereabouts you're looking and stuff. But to be honest, I just look at my phone about if I want to know stuff. Well, your watch, but, right? I mean, I don't know about you, Mike, but Apple yeah. Watch for navigating a city you don't know works really well. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is as well, like, Bose said that um, it's particularly interested in glasses over anything else because they're more comfortable and socially acceptable uh, and they uh, 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 rather than cons rather than earphones or earbuds and they say they don't signal to other people that you're busy or unapproachable and to be honest that's one of the things that I wear earbuds for because I don't want to talk to anyone and I don't want anyone approaching me but, but it is it is it is smart that they are tipping their toes in this like market because yeah. they will be able to maybe deliver this whole uh, sound aspect and this technology to yeah. someone else who makes the glasses, the AR glasses. And that's going yeah. to happen where you have AR glasses and uh, let's say Samsung has like AR glasses and, and, and another sound 
company or like music company or whatever it is will make so they they show that they are also it's kind of strange to have no like things in your glasses yet but they are th this is an opportunity for them to work on this now and and, and yeah. also like get into the market a bit i think they should really first focus on people with a visual disability i think there's a huge market there and there's I a lot of people that idea. have for example those uh those uh guiding dogs but uh they're they're really like in the in short supply as well, and uh, it's so hard for those kind of people to get around. Then, especially mm -hmm. people who become blind, it's nearly impossible. I think the, yeah. these kind of things can really change their change their world, and there will be a lot of funding on this side as well. I yeah. I agree with you, but I think that for the Bose brand, just looking at it as a product manager, I think they would need to go for some, you know, medical. Of course. assigned brand you know what i mean because i think that of course if i yeah. think about the bose brand and what they are and who they market to and all that i i think that those are two different mm -hmm. markets you know but mm -hmm. i agree with rowdy that i think it's a great use case you know if yeah. you if you if you're pairing this with a, a gps in your phone you know the gps is pretty good up to sort of like within a few meters so you know if this is going to be mm -hmm. helping you you know navigate around and and, and be more accessible and, and and see people if you're if you're blind you know then mm -hmm. that's going to be awesome you know Pikachu really cool. on your left <laughs> yeah capture Pikachu now <laughs> go catch Pikachu um yeah so that is Bose uh getting into the augmented reality uh market but doing it in a different way which I admire because you know everyone's kind of going the visual route yeah. and it's interesting True. to see them tackle the audio only route um and I think it's really cool that all these people are, are getting into immersive technology for wearable tech you know it, yeah. it's really exciting time uh, to see all this stuff being developed and uh, and coming out, it's going to be a really exciting few years yeah. ahead, I think. Yeah. The one thing, the one technology I still haven't seen yet, Mike, that I'm I'm still wishing they'll have for single dudes in a bar, right? Like it, it was called red taction back when I was doing my electronic engineer degree. Um, but when you touch somebody, uh, when you shake hands or whatever, that you have contact between your electronic devices across across your uh, electromagnetic. What do you call it? not aura whatever that's mm. called um because you can actually modulate that and it's very low power has no effects on you but yeah. it's an information exchange without having to hand over a business card i still think business cards are such an antiquated thing in mm. this day and age and it's still really awkward there's no like ubiquitous thing where i can just you know <laughs> bring up my phone well, next to an android phone and there's an exchange yeah, of information like this just is funny funny there. story when my brother went to china uh, no one is using business cards there it's all wechat just uh, codes bam done. That's it's it. All, like, it's all, it's all it. what? WeChat. Yeah, like, well, like that. But then, like, WeChat is like a, a global thing they use uh -huh. in China. Everyone uses this app. So everyone is connected. It's like Facebook, Twitter, everything is in this app. And everyone in China is using it to pay stuff, to post stuff, to everything. Everything. Uh -huh. It's it. So, so doing Good. business cards through that is. Uh, but that's going to take well for us, like uh, here, you know, we're kind of behind compared to so, so China. Separate as well. Interesting, Rowdy. Um, your uh, business card. What does the QR code link to? What does it go uh, to? I linked it to my YouTube page, the oh, contact page of my YouTube. That's a yeah. smart idea. Nice, nice man. I you like can that. always change oh, it too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right? Hang on, hang on. Quick, quick, quick round here. Who here? Obviously, Rowdy is a fan of QR codes. Otherwise, he wouldn't have one on his business card. But what about the rest of you guys? I never use them. I use business cards, but I don't use QR codes, no. The, the thing is with the QR code, like as cool as it is to look at, it's not like a URL. You, there's no sense a human being can make of that fucking QR code, <laughs> except for, and Mike, I don't know if you remember this, from, from, OC, from OC4, they had QR codes which had a little dude with a face, like a little mask in, yeah, embedded like, in the like QR code, in, in this QR right, code right, yeah. on yeah. site, which was kind of fun. That's how it won these. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, got, I got regular links on there anyway. Yeah, like the regular yeah, yeah, yeah. links are on there as well. Yeah, I know. But uh, the QR coders are, you know, if the, the thing is, if you have a Google phone and you take a picture, it automatically recognizes uh, the QR right. code. Like, yeah. I never found all those uh, things at uh, OC4 Zim. I never oh, got did you not? Bottle. I got two. I, I, I asked I asked you where they were and I think you pointed me in the right direction but then I got lost so I didn't find them. I think I think I blame direction. you for me not having a ball. Hey, hey. I'm joking. Sad Mike. Um, yeah, sad Mike. Hashtag sad. Um, so yeah, we have been rambling on for about an hour and a half now so we're gonna wrap this 
week's show up. I hope you guys don't mind that it was pre-recorded. We had to pre-record it because I'm away Saturday, so oh, I wasn't going to be available to stream this live, so apologies for that. But we all will try and make it into the chat so we can interact with you guys while we watch ourselves back, which is really weird. Um, but just to remind you, uh, this is a weekly AR, VR, and MR talk show live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel, unless we pre-record it like we did this time. You can tune into the show live at 4 p.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. in the UK, 9 a.m. in Central US. If you missed the podcast, you can catch up with the whole show on a Sunday as I re-upload it to my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis, or check out the audio-only version while you're out and about exploring the world and catching Pokemon. Are available on Google Play Music, iTunes, and on SoundCloud. Thanks for being part of this week's show. I hope you understand that we couldn't record this one live, but we will be back on track with our usual schedule next week. Thanks for tuning in, and bye-bye. Bye. Ciao. See you later. See you later. <laughs>